Using the Shaper Origin is pretty simple. It starts by preparing our work surface. I've already done that here. So basically I have my sheet of plywood, this would be my stock I'm cutting a part out of, and I put it on top of a piece of foam. And that's basically a backer board. That way when I route through the plywood, I'm not gonna route into my bench. The next thing we need to do is we need to apply this domino tape. And you see I've already started that on half the sheet. So I'm gonna finish this out quick. And the thing about this domino tape is it doesn't have to be terribly accurate. You just need to put strips every three to four inches and the order that the tape's down doesn't matter. The tape doesn't even need to be parallel to one another. Okay, I think that's probably good there. Now, we can do what's called creating a work space. So on the shaper, we're gonna hit the new scan button on the scan menu, and we're gonna press the green button to start scanning. Move these out of the way. And as we scan, what's going to happen is the shaper is going to take a basically a panoramic picture of all this tape that we've put down and it's going to create a virtual work surface. So we want to make sure we're just moving the shaper back and forth and highlighting all that domino tape. And on the screen, you'll notice that that tape's turning blue or the dominoes are turning blue. That means that those positions are locked into its memory. So we try it. We're going to try to make all the pieces of tape blue. Okay, that looks good. Then I'm gonna hit the green button to finish that, and that's gonna create the virtual workspace. So now we can go ahead and place our artwork or our file onto the workspace. We'll do that down here. And now we're gonna to go to the design menu. And I've already created a file, and I uploaded it to this Shaper Hub, which is the Shaper's uh, online library system, and it's personalized for each user. So I have an entire library of files that I've uploaded and imported. So we're gonna select one. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and select this guy. And what you'll see here is it creates an overview of your workspace and it imposes your artwork on top of it. And then placing your artwork is as simple as moving the origin around, and selecting where you want to place it. And on your artwork, the small white box around your artwork, that indicates where your bit is currently. So right now, it's showing that my bit is the, in the lower most center position of my artwork. So I know right here is gonna be the closest to me that I'm gonna cut. So let's get that positioned. Then when we're happy with that, we can go ahead and place it. And you'll notice on the screen, there's also a scale and rotate. So you can rotate the artwork around or you can scale it if you drew it one size, but you need to resize it on here, you can do that. So let's place that. And then once your artwork's placed, the cut screen is where you set your cutting parameters, such as your cut depth, the type of cut you're making, whether it's an online, outside line, inside line, offsets, uh, the bit size, you can also Rezero the Z axis. So when you change bits, that resets the Z axis. And then you can also change speed. So plunging speed and then the speed at which it will cut in automatic mode. So with that, we can go ahead and move the router around and select where we want to start. So let's start with these little swirly cuts in here. And this is a Longsworth chuck for a lathe. I'm gonna cut a couple of these out so we can use them here in our shop. Um, so this needs to be fairly accurate, but we do want to make sure that as we're making these cuts, we're being thorough on how we choose or which order we choose to make our cuts. If we have interior cuts, let's make those first. That way we are not uh, trying to route on a work piece that is all of a sudden cut and released from the larger sheet of plywood. So we'll start on these inside swirls. We'll make those cuts and we'll make all those at our first cut depth, which is 0.3 inches. And then we'll go back and lower the bit each time until we're completely through it. And actually using the machine is pretty easy. You can kind of see on the screen that it's about 50% standard routing and 50% video game. And honestly, that's kind of what it feels like. As you're routing, you're following a dotted line that's showing you the bit path. 
and the dot designates the center of the bit. And all you have to do as you route is keep the circle around that dot. If that dot leaves the circle bullseye that's on there, it will retract and you'll be left with just a tiny little nick that's going on your tool pad. It's important to note that as you're routing, watch your screen because there is a tape indicator. And if it runs out of tape and the origin cannot see enough tape, it will retract the bit. But don't worry, you can always go back and add more tape and add to the existing work surface. So there we go. That's pretty much CNC quality cuts from a handheld router with a little help from a computer. So let me talk about routing with this thing real quick. There's a couple types of cuts I made on here. An outside cut around the outside of the artwork to cut the shape free. I have inside cuts for these slots that jaws will slide in. Then I also have a pocketing cut here for the headstock that I'll screw in there. So now that I've taken a part of this sheet of plywood out, I can actually go ahead and save this plywood that has the tape already applied. A roll of tape costs about $18, and it covers about a sheet and a half of plywood. And once you've scanned the work surface in and even cut out of it, that work surface is saved in the shaper. That way you can come back, pull this sheet off the rack, and the work surface is already there. You don't have to go through the scanning process again. Plus, Origin knows where you've removed stock from. So as you go to place parts, you can butt them right up close to stuff that you've already cut out, so you have very little waste. Overall, it's a great machine that's really easy to use, and I've had a lot of fun messing around with it for the last couple months. So if you've ever wanted to add a CNC to your shop, but you don't have the footprint, or even if you do have the footprint, take a look at the Shaper Origin. It's a pretty cool tool that I think you'll come to appreciate.